श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महंत स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय एज वी कंटिन्यू ऑन आर स्टडी ऑफ प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज इज जीवन चरित्र टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द सेक्शन सी पार्ट सेवनटीन पेज वन टू वन it very nicely details about we were talking about pramukh pramukh sai maharaj's um leadership as a kothari and how he used to manage the administration of the mandir this topic this this section actually details a lot of that and it explains how swami shri was a very uh, a very effective karyakar because he had amazing people skills very very effective in the way he dealt with people and it was very difficult for swami in those days considering he was very young and the people that he had to deal with were people of a higher stature both in age and experience <clears throat> and then you had to bring results and drive results out of them yet and then within the village also <clears throat> there were some people who were little defiant and maybe even outspoken but yet pramukh sai maharaj had to work with all those people but he won over everybody's hearts and <clears throat> their confidence and that's why while swami shri was in sarangpur at that time um there was a point when unanimously all the residents of the village they decided to appoint pramukh sai maharaj as the sarpanch of the village as the sarpanch as sarpanch meaning the chief of the village and they even said it that if narayan swami were to become the sarpanch then there would be no need for an election in the village this is how popular pramukh sai maharaj was and how much he was loved <coughs> by people of the village nevertheless swami also was as i mentioned earlier very very uh he knew all the people and even from time to time sami would remember them even after he was uh, after he had left his kothari seva many years later sami would reminisce on people like there was a there was a man by the name of ali who was a muslim villager at that time and um sami remembered him there was a hari bhakt by the name of deo babar and sami would often talk about how deo babar would often you know mediate a lot of discussions that happened within the village if needed if there were disputes or things like that but at the same time they every time the deo babar allah bhai or any al bhai or any of these people if they were going out of sarangpur they would always visit pramukh sai maharaj and say swami do you need anything we can bring back something from the village etc etc so they were always always very very helpful one particular incident that swami would often talk about was how as a young kothari <coughs> despite having looked after all the administration of the mandir but prabhu swami there was a hari bhakt by the name of mohan uh, sakariyo so him he would actually make these security night rounds and visits around the campus not just the sarangpur mandir but he would even have to go to the farm and the grounds which were beyond that so him ramji bhagat and a couple of other people they would have to go and do the security rounds so there was a there was a farm which we call the um, uh, the amliwadi and there was another farm called the shankarwadi so all this swami initially had to do these rounds and then he would come back around 4 am in the morning so despite having to do all the administration during the day even at night they would take him on the security rounds then virsang bhagat who was a kothari of hanuman ji mandir which is across the road he found out about this about 10 days later and so he came and told prabhu swami and mohan bhai look that narayan swami is the kothari there's no need for him to go around if you need people let me know i will send parshads to gam uh, to guard the farm so we could see that even virsang bhagat you know had a lot of affinity towards uh, pramukh swami maharaj and extended all the help that he could at that time as well let's move on to c18 now again the way pramukh sai maharaj worked with people was very interesting because swami said that although i was the kothari you know during while he was there at, uh, and he had a senior, uh, senior position but swami was very very humble swami o kehta tha ke badane page lagine j apne badu kaam karta he would go there go and meet all the santos he would bow down to them he would go and meet all the workers you know rather than ordering people swami would say that look i'm new i don't know about this so please tell me how and how we move forward and so that way we could see that swami had administrated <coughs> and acquired a lot of trust from all the hari bhaktos as well there was a time when um, when pramukh sai maharaj was appointed as a kothari and one of the santos or somebody asked him okay, when you were appointed as kothari you know would everybody just come and ask you and swami says no i would be the one that would proactively go up to them reach out to them and ask them for their advice so we can see that swami's method of leadership was very very different he was very very humble and always seeking to learn 
and although he was a leader, Swami behaved like a sevak. Let's move on to C19. Again, it, this also highlights a lot of the work and the seva that Swami Sri did while, his, while he was in Sarangpur. There was a Haribak by the name of Mohan Bhai, who was a Kodi Haribak at that time. He would often say that during the construction of the entrance gateway in Sarangpur, I'd often seen Narayan Swami, he would you know, lead the oxen for the churning of the lime pit. He says, I've even seen Pramukh Sai Maharaj climb up, climb up and down the scaffolding. So even though he was the Kothari of the Mandir, he still carried on doing all these menial tasks and small types of seva as well. Not only that, within the village in Sarangpur, um, Hakka Bapu used to live in Sarangpur. But for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, all the villagers were like his family member. Once when Hakka Bai in his house wanted to dig a well, so everything had been decided. Shashi Ji Maharaj had also decided which date they had to do this. He had for an urgent request, Hakabai had to leave uh, with Shastriji Maharaj for Vicharan. And there were no other male Hari Bhaktos or family members at that time. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj took it upon himself to go and help. So he took Devshi Bhai, another Hari Bhakt, with him. They went to Hakabai's house. They, they measured the well, completed all the work for the planning of the well and submitted that. So all these kind of things Pramukh Sai Maharaj did. Not only that, there was a, a wall that needed to be built near Hakabai's house. So that's also something that Swami Sri took on, undertook that. He made sure that all the work was done. Despite Hakabai being away, Pramukh Sai Maharaj took, on, took it upon himself to, to look after Hakabai's um, house and all the construction at that time. There's another incident about how during Jaljini Ekadashi, when that was celebrated in Sarampur, Pramukh Sai Maharaj on the day of Nirjara Upas would make sure that despite being the Kothari, he would visit every single house that was there in there. You know, and it was so hot at that time. They say that Pramukh Sai Maharaj visited almost 70 to 80 homes uh, in that time during his uh, tenure as a Kothari in Sarampur Mandir. As we move on to C20, <coughs> page 120. Pramukh Sai Maharaj's ability to work with people is also highlighted in this chapter. So there's a very nice incident where a senior sadhu who was living in, uh, in Sarangpur was expecting a guest to come from Amdavad. And so because Pramukh Sai Maharaj was Kothari, naturally people would go up to Pramukh Sai Maharaj and ask for all the sort of help that was needed. So the sadhu would walk up to Pramukh Sai Maharaj and said, look, I'm expecting a guest to come. Uh, you'll need a cart, you know, set up, a, arrange a cart to be sent up to pick, uh, you know, to pick him up from the station in Botad. Not only that, please just make sure that everything is done well. The bundles of grass are put into the into the cart. The driver is ready. Make sure that the sheets and everything are ready for the seating, etc., etc. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj assured the sadhu that look, all the arrangements will be done. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Two, three hours later, the sadhu comes up again to Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Swami, is the arrangement done? Make sure it's all done. So Swami Sri reassured him. Early in the morning again, the sadhu comes up to Swami and says, Swami, are you sure everything's okay? And Pramukh Swami said, look, I am aware. Don't worry, everything is, is taken care of. Despite these reassurances, two to three times, that sadhu kept on checking up with Pramukh Sai Maharaj just to make sure that everything was prepared. Yet Pramukh Sai Maharaj was never frustrated. He carried on just very calmly responding to this, uh, to this son's requests. Many times, uh, you know, a few years later, somebody asked that Swami, didn't you get a, uh, didn't you get upset when people kept asking you things like this? And Swami said it very nicely. Swami said, "Look, you know, Ekwakat, you know, there's no point in getting annoyed. Once we've understood the personality and the nature of that particular person, then we just adjust and you become habituated to that. And so this is something that we noticed throughout Pramukh Sai Maharaj's life. You know, it was you, he wouldn't get agitated with little things like this, and despite." All the other responsibilities he had, even small things like this, Pramukh Sai Maharaj would tackle very, uh, very easily. As we move on to C21, a very nice incident again. The Sattos asked Pramukh Sai Maharaj once that when you were a Kothari, did everyone call you as Kothari Swami? Did they call you Kothari? And Swami says, well, I can't remember any such thing. And the Sattos said, well, obviously you must remember that. And Swami said, look, honestly... There's nothing worth remembering that. Sadhu etle sadhu. You know, I'm just a sadhu. You know, what difference does it make if you're a Kothari or anything uh, uh, like that? So for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, it wasn't about position. I think the fact that, and it's very interesting how he mentioned sadhu etle sadhu. So that's very nice. Puja Ishwaran Swami often refers to it. He says that I still remember how when we were little children, when we used to come to Sarampur Mandir and we would meet Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he says that from the beginning, we could see that he was very, very mature, very, very patient and full of dignity in the way he uh, carried himself. So that is another thing about Pramukh Sai Maharaj's personality. Let's move on to C22. 
again, Swami Sri's relationship with all the people that were in the village. As we mentioned earlier on, he had won the hearts of everybody that were living in Sarangpur. Once uh, when Pramukh Swami Maharaj was on his rounds in Sarangpur, you know, Swami saw an old man standing in the distance. And he goes, oh, Vithal, how are you? Uh, he goes, it's nice to see that you're here. He says, do you still come to the mandir? Small talk. But then he introduced Vithal to all the santos. He said, Swami, Swami said that Vithal was the village potter. And, <clears throat> you know, I used to know him. I knew his brother. And he introduced Vithal to all the santos as well. So 40 years ago, that's something like this. That's when Swami was in Sarampur. He still remembers all these people. Again, on an another incident, he was walking through and he saw another Haribak standing there. And he goes, oh, Mohan. And he goes, this is Mohan. Uh, you know, he was here when I was there as well. I knew him, I knew his father. His father was the secretary of Sh uh, Shermia, of Dhorka. Again, never forgot all the hard work that people back in the day had actually helped him out. Another time when Swami was walking, he saw another aged Hari Bhakta and he goes, Oh, Darbar, Kemcho, how are you? You know, how are you doing? How is everything? And he started asking him about, again about his well being. And then Swami called him over and blessed him. And then, then again, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj introduced him and his family. Swami says, you know, this is the brother of, brother of Tapubha. And he was there when I was a Kothari as well. And he, and he did a lot of seva. Similarly, many other Hari Bhaktos Swami would remember. So, despite people who we might consider or people might consider as small, for Pramukh Sahib Maharaj, he never forgot. And I think many Hari Bhaktos can still remember how Pramukh Sahib Maharaj would often remember them in their old days when they did lots of seva as well. As we move on to C23. Now, this is again a very nice, interesting prasang over here. <coughs> this is in page 123. So, obviously, after becoming the Kothari, there were a lot of times when a lot of correspondence that Swami would have to do with Shastri Maharaj as far as letters were concerned. So, they would write letters to each other. And interestingly, Shastri Maharaj, every time Shastri Maharaj wrote a letter, he would title the letter, he would put the title Shastri before Pramukh Sai Maharaj's name. So, Shastri Narayan Swarup Das. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj felt this a little inappropriate about this because although he had studied Sanskrit, um, he hadn't. He, he had to stop halfway because Shastri Ji Maharaj had instructed him to become the court of the Mandir. So his education had stopped. So he wasn't officially a Shastri, and so it made him feel very uncomfortable. And he actually voiced it to Shastri Ji Maharaj, and he said, "Swami, I didn't become a Shastri, and yet you keep writing this to me. I feel very uncomfortable, especially from you know from someone like you." addressing me as a Shastri. And Shastri Ji Maharaj very fondly responded saying, look, as you commenced the study, the study of Kaumudi, you are a Shastri. And so Swami had only started uh, the studying Kaumudi yet. Shastri Ji Maharaj still addressed him as Shastri. So this is something we see that in, in a very nice way that the title Shastri was given to Pramukh Sai Maharaj by his guru, Shastri Ji Maharaj. We move on to C24. This is page 123 to 124, where Swami, it discusses how the great work that Swami had done while he was in, uh, in Sarampur as Kothari. So while he was there, many, many projects were undertaken. He did the Haveli, the gateway, the bridge, the powerhouse, the two-storied Haveli. There was a two-storied Haveli back in the day. It's not there anymore. But Swami, uh, when, the, when the construction was done, when we had to break down the Haveli, then Swami remembered, Swami said that the craftsmen that came from Mojidar were very responsible, responsible for the work in the Haveli and the construction was so strong and so robust that Swami remembered that even then during those days. So many a time Swami would reminisce all the hard work that had taken place at that time. Incidentally, there was also a time when Swami mentioned how when Swami had gone to Haveli, uh, Swami had gone to Bhavnagar to purchase the wood for the Haveli and at that time Swami actually got stuck in one of the riots because at that time, coincidentally, it happened that the riot had broken out. And so Swami mentioned one time when he got stuck in one of those riots as well. So that person is also mentioned uh, in this chapter. Let's move on to C25, which is page 124 to 125. Now, this is very interesting. As we many of us have seen, many of us may have seen the gate in Sarampur, a, a magnificent gate as you walk into the mandir, just before you walk into the mandir, Shastri Ji Maharaj's uh, sankalp that we wanted to build a huge gate, a grand gateway to the mandir entrance of uh, Sarangpur. Now, the times were very difficult at that time, financial difficulties, they were struggling. On a daily basis, people would, they would, the mandir would just probably get about four anas, eight anas, maybe one rupee. So four anas is 25 paisa. So something like from 25 paisa to maximum maybe 5 rupees on a good day. The monthly income would probably just amount to around 25 to 30 rupees. Yet, 
they had to purchase all the goods on credit at that time because they didn't have uh, income. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj would have to go to Botad, acquire the goods, the wood, the cement, all that, all on credit. And despite this, sometimes the demands were much, much higher. And it, it, they came a point where, you know, it, it came up to about 25 to 30,000 rupees, 25,000 to 30,000 rupees. And yet Swami Sri, both time, people had a lot of faith and trust in Pramukh Sai Maharaj. So they would give him that time. They look, don't worry, you can make the payment later. Yet this non-payment or not repaying all this would actually hurt Swami a lot. And he got very confused about it, was very upset about it. So much so that at one point, Swami said he dropped everything and the, uh, Swami decided to do a, a small pilgrimage. And Swami often recounts this, that Swami says that they went to Gondal, they went to Dwarka, they went to Bhadra almost from a 20 to 30 day break from all this uh, seva. Eventually Shastriji Maharaj found out and then Swami gave him lots of words of encouragement uh, to, to Pramukh Sai Maharaj that not to worry, everything will get back to normal. Again, we could see the relationship between Shastriji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj. You could imagine the stress that was, uh, that, that anybody who has financial difficulties at that time, when you have to manage such a huge mandir, so much construction and you have to keep delaying the, the repayments. So this was the pressure that Pramukh Swami Maharaj had faced at the age of 25, 26. So a lot of pressure at a young age, but we can see that in some of these incidences as well. Eventually the gate was completed in 1948 and Shastri Maharaj was very, very happy to see this. And he said that whosoever does the darshan of this gateway will attain moksha. Khali darvajana darshan kar se ene pan mokshni prapti thase. Shriji Maharaj and Gunath and Swami will themselves come to collect them. Gunath and Swami and Shriji Maharaj pote tamne leva mate aose. So this is again another nice incident from this uh, chapter. Let's move on to C26. Uh, they had celebrated Shastriji Maharaj's birthday his 84th birthday celebrations. And then from there, Shastaji Maharaj had traveled to Nenpur. There was a para in, in Nenpur. Pramukh Sai Maharaj had also accompanied, accompanied Shastaji Maharaj over there. Now, during the para in, Shastaji Maharaj had to visit Amdavad for some work for one day. Unfortunately, while he was in Amdavad, he suffered a heart attack. This was on Monday, 23rd of February, 1948. As soon as Pramukh Sai Maharaj heard this, he was very, very stressed out. It was very upsetting to hear this news. Unfortunately, Pramukh Sai Maharaj could not leave the Parayan in Nenpur to go to Amdavad. And so he remained in Nenpur until the end of the Parayan. Eventually, when it was over, Swami shot away straight to Amdavad uh, to meet Shastriji Maharaj. And upon his first, uh, the first time when he did see Shastriji Maharaj and to see Shastriji Maharaj's face and the illness, it was heartbreaking for Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And he actually burst out into tears. He got very, very emotional. And seeing this condition, it was almost like, you know, he, the life was draining out of him. Because for Shastriji Maharaj, for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Shastriji Maharaj was everything for him. Yet, eventually, when Shastriji Maharaj suddenly sat up on his bed, and, you know, he was very cheerful in the way he, when he met Pramukh Sai Maharaj, eventually, Pramukh, you could see life coming back into Pramukh Sai Maharaj's face. The senses came back. And then he stayed with Shastriji Maharaj for, for a few days and then returned to Sarangpur. So we could see the love, the attachment that Pramukh Sai Maharaj had for Shastriji Maharaj in this incident. C27. Now this is uh, the incident about the, the building of the gate. The bridge between the gate, uh, the bridge that uh, leads into the gate in Sarangpur. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj would often talk about this. Many of us have heard Pramukh Sai Maharaj also recount this, this incident. Shastriji Maharaj wanted to build a gate, a, a, a bridge, and the bridge Shastriji Maharaj's wish was that the bridge should be about 24 feet wide. Now, considering the population of the mandir, the, the, the minimal traffic and the minimal inflow of people coming in and out of the mandir, so Pramukh Sai Maharaj and, the, uh, and Arjun Bhai, who was the engineer at that time or the supervisor at that time, they thought that, well, it's no point having a, a, gay, a bridge about 24 feet wide to also consider in the cost factor as well. Why don't we just keep it at 16? And so they mentioned this to Shastriji Maharaj. At that point, Shastriji Maharaj didn't say anything. So they were actually, they went to meet Shastriji Maharaj in Atladra. And Shastriji, Pramukh Sai Maharaj presented this to Shastriji Maharaj. Ki apne gate, let's keep it about 16 feet. At that point, Shastriji Maharaj didn't say anything. Anyway, that evening, when they had to do Katha, so Shastriji Maharaj asked Pramukh Sai Maharaj to read the Bhakta Chintamari. And he asked him to open specifically the 86th chapter. Now this chapter talks a lot about how uh, the Autas and everybody follow the Agna of Bhagwan, And so as soon as 
Pramukh Sai Maharaj read this and he had finished reading, Shastri Ji Maharaj then asked him, Ke, Ave, tu kai kai samjyo? Immediately Pramukh Sai Maharaj was very, very witty, very quick. He caught on straight away and he says, Ha Swami, Baddu samji gyo. Yes, I do understand. The bridge needs to be 24 feet. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj often remember this prasang, this incident, and also reminded us that whenever we have an incident, similar incident, whenever the Satpurush gives us an agna, he said, Ke, remember this chapter 86 from the Bhakta Chintamani. As we move on to C28, <clears throat> page 127 to 128. This talks about a letter that Pramukh Sai Maharaj had written to Shastriji Maharaj. It just shows how critical the situation was at that time. And the letter reads that there is a special, this is Pramukh Sai Maharaj writing to Shastriji Maharaj. There is a special request that 2000 rupees will be required by the day of Amas. Please, could you make that, could you make that arrangement? The previous time, the funds were used up in paying the artisans, artisans wages, as well as the credit due to Amrit Bhai Vasani. Since then, a thousand to about a 1500, ru 1500 rupees have been borrowed to continue the work. Now you can imagine how dire the situation must have been back then. That had to be given immediately. We will have to pay around 500 rupees to the workers for the well at the end of the month. Secondly, food provisions such as flour and ghee, etc., also have to be purchased. Therefore, please arrange for 2,000 rupees to reach us by Amas. So Swami is writing to Shastriji Maharaj requesting for more money. And then Swami goes on to say, it's very interesting to see the respect in which he pleads to Shastriji Maharaj. Swami, you are compassionate. Please continue to look after your children. You are our life, you are our life, and we only have your support. Whatever peace or joy there may be, that is only due to you. The situation is such that one's mind is tense. So he's explaining that there is a lot of, it's, there's a lot of, it's very tense right now, the situation. But whatever we are is because of you. However, due to your sweet grace, there is peace. Apna ashirvad thij khub shanti che. So this is one thing, very interesting to see how the gravity of the financial dis difficulties that they had back in those days. We can see this in the words of the letter. Next, we move on to C29, um, page 2. 128. It's just a reminiscing prasang from the time of Pramukh Sai Maharaj as Kothari in Sarampur. Pramukh Sai Maharaj talks about a very incident, a small incident when Swami was sleeping outside the Rang Mandap, which is in, uh, which is directly under the mandir. The Rang Mandap was closed, and Swami was sleeping outside. All of a sudden, a noise came from within, and so Swami says, "I thought there's there's a thief inside that has broken in." So Swami said, "I woke up Prabhu and a couple of others. Each of us stood in front of the three entrances of the Rang Mandap." And as soon as we opened it, a dog came running out. It was just a dog. It wasn't a chore. It wasn't a thief. But this is one incident that Pramukh Sai Maharaj often recounts. Let's move on to C30. C30 is a very nice incident about Shastriji Maharaj's Suvanartula. So Shastriji Maharaj had come into Atladra. It was the occasion of Vasant Panchmi, February 3rd, 1949. It was Shastriji Maharaj's 85th birthday celebrations. And everybody had decided to do a Suvanartula at that time. So Chaturbhut Swami, now what had happened was, everybody was ready to celebrate the, the, the festivities and Shastriji Maharaj was going to be weighed in gold. But somehow during that time, there was a magazine that had published from another institution and the words were saying that a Suvarnatula does not befit a sadhu. This is what the, the magazine had said. So Chaturbhut Swami, he informed Shastriji Maharaj about this article. And obviously Shastriji Maharaj, you know, as a sadhu, very, very pure-hearted, completely decided uh, on this. And he said that he's not going to sit on the Suvarnatula. And uh, coincidentally, at that time, Pramukh Sai Maharaj also came in. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj had come in and he went to meet uh, Shastriji Maharaj. Now what had happened was, at that time, Shastriji Maharaj came out, the inv invitations and everything had gone, uh, gone out. And Shastriji Maharaj made an announcement that I'm not going to sit on the Suvarnatula. No matter what happens, I am not going to sit on this Suvarnatula. All the Hari Bhaktas, they came and pleaded to Shastriji Maharaj, saying, look, Swami, we've made all the arrangements, the invitations have gone out, everything is ready. But Shastriji Maharaj was very firm and adamant about this. And he said, no matter what happens, I am not going to sit on this Tula. Now, immediately everybody, they gathered and they had a meeting. So, Asha Bhai, Ishwar Bhai, Mathur Bhai, all the senior Hari Bhaktas, 
how did shastri ji maharaj come to this conclusion that is what they decided that, that's what they, the meeting was about and then someone said well it it coincided when narendra meaning pramukh sai maharaj when he came in to meet shastri ji maharaj it must have been narendra and automatically everybody decided to blame pramukh sai maharaj not only did they blame him they called him into the meeting and they yelled at him they reprimanded him and you know because these were senior hari bhaktas they said you know what do you think you are do you think we're stupid do you think we're fools our reputation was what's going to happen to all of us imagine how you've heart you know you've broken everybody else's hearts everybody was looking forward to all this and they were very very strong in the tone the way they insulted pramukh sai maharaj now pramukh sai maharaj wasn't at fault at all but he was obviously very uh, very worried and then shastri ji maharaj found out about this and then shastri ji maharaj called pramukh sai maharaj in and said what happened so pramukh sai maharaj explained everything and said look swami now everybody is blaming me so please please let's find a solution i beg you to change your mind and eventually then shastri ji maharaj said look don't worry we'll sort we'll sort everything out eventually then shastri ji maharaj did agree to sit on the tula but he said that i will sit on the tula you'll have to put uh, sugar crystals sakar on the other side i'll sit on that and then you can wait with gold and that way they found a middle route and eventually the suvarna tula did take place but we can see this whole incident where it was very very difficult for a young leader like pramukh sai maharaj to be in this situation you know and then many years later they asked pramukh sai maharaj that swami it wasn't your fault yet everybody yelled at you and you know how it wasn't your fault so how did you take on it and swami said very nicely he responded swami said look all these devotees were very senior they had made lots of sacrifices during the time of shastri ji maharaj they had all right to reprimand me we can see from this that this is the way pramukh sai maharaj dealt with all these incidences let's move on to c31 now this is a very this took another turn in pramukh sai maharaj's life while he was still you know as soon as the suvarna tula was over pramukh sai maharaj accompanied uh, shastri ji maharaj to dared and while they were in dared out of the blue shastri ji maharaj suddenly said i wish you to continue your studies and if you do then i will be very happy now on the one end he had his administrative responsibilities in sarangpur as the kothari and now shastri ji maharaj wants him to drop that and carry on start and start his studies again for all those of us who have had to start our st- stop our studies and then restart again i think we know how difficult it would be to start your studies again not only that he has to leave his position as a kothari to become a student again nevertheless pramukh sai maharaj very very flexible very uh, again agnankit hata and immediately he accepted and he said swami yes your wish is my command and he carried on doing that eventually they went to sarangpur and he said to shashima look my wish is to my ultimate wish is to please you no matter what happens so eventually they went to sarangpur and in 1949 Swami started his uh, education again but while they were in Sarampur Shastri ji Maharaj called all the hari bhaktos and all the santos and they gave Pramukh Sai Maharaj a very uh, warm farewell a very emotional farewell actually because now Pramukh Sai Maharaj was going to lead uh, leave Sarampur to go to Ahmedabad to carry on with his studies eventually on Akha Trij 1st of May 1949 Pramukh Sai Maharaj started his education all over again with uh, well not he continued his studies again with Girja Shankar Mehta in Ahmedabad and that's when Pramukh Sai Maharaj started his studies again he studied the Shrimad Bhagavat at that time C32 so C32 is another incident where it talks about where Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Sarangpur at that time a uh, swami was studying in Ahmedabad but in Sarangpur there was a Hanuman mandir and they were celebrating their 100th 100th anniversary patotsav of the Hanuman ji mandir at that time there was a lot of work that was needed a lot of people were visiting lots of people needed to be fed and everything there was almost like 2 to 3000 people were being fed over the course of 3 days not only that 125 sadhus from different mandirs had also come to partake in the festivities and at that time pramukh shastri ji maharaj called pramukh sai maharaj from amdavad because pramukh sai maharaj had all the expertise the relations within the village so pramukh sai maharaj as an expert came in he took over a lot of the responsibilities the way he managed the whole inc- the whole uh, prasang everybody was very very happy with the way the uh, event was executed and then virsam bhagat the nagarshit mohan bhai who was the mayor of gadara all these people jashbai 
of the secretary of Vartal Sansta, all of them were very, very happy. And we could see that, and they were very happy with uh, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, and they all went and applauded this. They even told Shastri Ji Maharaj, it is because of Narayan Swarup Das, or this Narayan Swami, that's why this, this uh, event was so successful. So this is another incident that we hear in, in this prasang. Let's move on to C33. A very nice incident over here. The Shilanyas of Garuda Mandir, the foundation stone laying ceremony of Garuda Mandir took place on the 16th of November in 1949. From then on, Swami went, Shastri went to Sarangpur and then from there he went to Amdavad. Now while they were in Amdavad, Yogiji Maharaj, Shastri Maharaj was doing his puja one morning and Pramukh Sai Maharaj was sitting there doing darshan. At that time, as soon as Pramukh Sai, Shastri Maharaj's puja was over, Yogiji Maharaj came up to Shastri Ji Maharaj and he said to Swami, uh, Shastri Ji Maharaj, Swami, you have this sanctified mada of Sri Ji Maharaj. So it was a prasadini mada, Bhagwan Swami Narayana Vakhatni prasadini mada hati. And he said that you had promised to give it to uh, Pramukh Sai Maharaj. So why don't you please give it? So Yogi Ji Maharaj requested this to Shastri Ji Maharaj. Shastri Ji Maharaj replied saying, look, I said I'll give it, but only after he's completed his kaumudi. <laughs> only then I'll give it to him. And well, Yogi Bapa said, look, he's going to finish his studies regardless. Just uh, give it. And eventually then Shastri Ji Maharaj, through the request of Yogi Ji Maharaj, gave this mada to Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj was also blessed at that time. And then Shastri Ji Maharaj told Pramukh Sai Maharaj, and said to Yogi Bapa, Ke, Yogi, please give your blessings that he may continue and he may become a virtuous, he may become as virtuous as yourself and serve the satsang. So this was a gift that Shastri Ji Maharaj had given Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Let's go on to C34. Now, this talks about Pramukh Sai Maharaj's care for his Hari Bhaktos. There was a time when a Hari Bhakt by the name of Mulji Mistri of Mojidar, he was going to visit Mumbai to purchase a, um, an engine, a 10, horse, a 10 horsepower oil engine, which he needed for his house at that time. So, he requested, and he, you know, he had very, his financial conditions weren't too well. And in those days, going to Mumbai was like going abroad. It was a huge a uh, big deal and Swami was a little bit worried about him as well because going to Mumbai you needed to be able to barter as well and to get a good deal. So to ensure that Mulji Bhai you know, didn't encounter any difficulties or any issues, Pramukh Sai Maharaj wrote a letter to Shastri Ji Maharaj who was in Mumbai at that time. And in that letter, Swami Shri writes that Mistri Mulji Bhai is thinking of purchasing an, an engine for his grain grinding machine. For this matter, he has come to Mumbai Please, could you recommend him to someone so that he can procure a good engine at a reasonable price? Now, it's, it may seem like a small thing for us, but for that Hari Bhakti, it was a big deal. And as we know that Pramukh Sai Maharaj was always, he went out of his way to help other people. At the same time, he wrote a letter to Hakabai. Mulji Bhai has come there. He needs to purchase an engine. So for that, please speak to Harshad Bhai or someone else to find someone who can provide an engine at a reasonable price. Please provide other necessary facilities. If Mulji Bhai requires additional money, please speak to Puja Shastri Ji Maharaj to make those arrangements as well. Please show him the city of Mumbai while he's there. And then he throws in a nice uh, line to Hakabai. Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Hakabai were very good friends. And he said, I'm sure you must be enjoying the fresh air in, in Mumbai in the Malbar Hills over there. So this five lines of letters says so much about the way Pramukh Sai Maharaj write letters. Many of us have received these letters. But if you look at the letter, firstly, you can see, we can see Pramukh Swami Maharaj's love for the Hari Bhaktas in making sure that he obtains the right item from the right person. Secondly, we see in this letter how Swami says that if required, the devotee requires financial assistance, but only if it is Shastri Ji Maharaj's wish. So again, he's making sure that, you know, he receives this financial assistance. And then thirdly, Swami says, look, he's visiting a new city and it's going to be new for him. Maybe this is the first time he goes there. He instructs Hakabai Please make arrangements for Mulji Bhai to go and visit uh, Mumbai as well and tour Mumbai. And then fourthly, we can't see it in this letter, but in Gujarati, Swami writes it. You can see the humble tone in which he writes the letter. Aap show ji, ke show ji, batao show ji. Very respectful, even while he's speaking to a friend. Eventually, we can see a, a, a nice joke in the line. We could see the friendship between Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Hakka Bapu, where he says, Ke Malbar Hills Ma, and it, I'm sure you're enjoying the fresh air in Malbar Hills while we're here in Amdavad. So again, a very nice letter from Shastri Ji Maharaj, uh, from Pramukh Sai Maharaj in this letter. We'll end the session here today. Swaminarayan Bhagwanani Jai.